update on Fox 14. You're watching the KOEM Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, a string of car break-ins have Joplin police on the lookout. And a Columbus police officer is arrested for charges of child sex crimes. And we have an alert day today. Strong, potentially severe thunderstorms by late morning into the afternoon. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOEM Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner just after 7 a.m. on this Thursday morning here in the four states. And one thing we want to point out right at the bottom of your screen is our Hero Fund telephone. Yes. Uh, telethon. Yes. That begins. Nailed well, it. You need to use the telephone to participate in the telethon. Yes, yes. Or you can go online, of course. Of course, we will be taking donations at our noon, 5 and 6 p.m. newscast. You can also find out more information on our website at koemnewsnow.com. That's certainly an important thing. Helps first responders in the area with uh, gear, supplies, things that they need to keep us safe. We also have that alert day today yes. as well for those strong severe thunderstorms. We're going to get into details on that here in just a moment. But yes. speaking of first responders, right. it's a situation developing yes. in Joplin. In Joplin police say several thefts from vehicles happened throughout the city over the past few days. KOM's Fernanda Silva spoke to a resident who said a person entered his car to steal items from it. Actually heard a car alarm going off uh, around 11 o'clock and I looked around the neighborhood to make sure I didn't see anything and we went back inside and called it a night and then the next morning when I came out to get in my truck I noticed the door was partially open and that's when I knew someone had been in my vehicle. This video was recorded by the Joplin resident home security camera after 11 Tuesday night. It shows a woman walking in the driveway toward the driver's seat door. The car is unlocked. She opens the door and moves the items in the center console. I know it was at least mine and two other neighbors because the one with the car alarm going off and then my neighbor immediately next door was outside this morning and I told them to check their vehicles in case something was missing, and they said they actually did have stuff missing out of it. This is the second time a theft happened in the driveway of this citizen. He had a dirt bike stolen three years ago, the reason why he installed the security cameras. Thefts from vehicles tend to be crimes of opportunity, where criminals will walk down the street and open door handles, and, and they'll enter the vehicles where the doors are unlocked, so make sure to lock your vehicles. Besides locking your door, police also advise you not to leave valuable items in your car and call 911 if that happens to you. If we know where things are occurring, then we can devote resources to those areas. So I guess it's kind of a lesson learned in the sense of keeping the cars uh, locked. I didn't lose anything too important to me, but absolutely lesson learned about keeping the vehicles locked at all times because you cannot trust people. In Joplin, Fernanda Silva, KOAM News. According to the police department, the number of thefts from vehicle reports decreased this year compared to the same time period last year. Now, between January 1st of, and April 16th of 2023, about 67 cases were reported. This year, there were about 43. And it is just a, it's a, an essential reminder to make of sure course, you do lock yes. your car. Uh, because uh, I, I mentioned, I think, a couple of years ago, uh, we were just talking about this. My wife's car, she forgot to lock it yeah. one night, one time. And that's all it takes, yeah. one time. And somebody was going through our neighborhood looking for unlocked cars, and they hit a number of vehicles. So always lock your car. An important it's reminder. essential. Absolutely. And make sure you're prepared for the potential for strong to severe thunderstorms today. We have that alert day today for that potential for strong to severe thunderstorms, mainly as we head into late morning and afternoon hours across the area. At the threat, the greater threat is going to be a little further across the south eastern half of our viewing area. Our northwestern counties may be clear of it and we're looking thunderstorm chances anywhere from eight to four, but the best window for stronger storms starting about 10, 11 o'clock this morning through four this afternoon. So here's what we're looking at in the Skywatch Storm Tracker. Nothing overly impressive in our area just yet. This activity got going about an hour or two ago along the cold front entering our northwestern counties. It's not really doing much right now, but it is expected. Of course, it'll continue to shift south and east and move into an area that's a little more favorable. Up north, it, they They've been dealing with strong to severe thunderstorms all morning. No warnings with any of this activity, but Kansas City getting right in the middle of another uh, round of strong storms out there. 
And then this is the activity that as it shifts south and east into a slightly more favorable environment, it's expected to intensify over the next uh, two or three hours and bring us that threat for strong to severe thunderstorms. And you can see it develop pretty quickly out there. But again, nothing impressive yet, but that's expected to change. So here's what we're looking at in terms of our severe threat. We have that low end tornado risk primarily across our eastern counties, and we have a low to elevated hail and wind risk out there. And again, you can see this is what we're talking about. It's this zone that's going to be a bit more favorable for these stronger storms out there. So we can get a little bit warmer and we're going to get uh, we're going to have those gusty south winds bringing in a little more moisture. 68 in Joplin right now. This is what we're talking about. It's sunny up in Joplin right now. 67 in Pittsburgh. Around the region, again, our northwestern counties, uh, Yates Center, Neotache, Chanute, Iola, Sedan, you're very likely hitting your highs this morning. And as that front continues to push through, your temperatures are fall through the 50s into the afternoon. Ahead of that, we're in the 60s, but we're expected to warm up a little more as we head into the afternoon. So again, ahead of the front, highs mid-70s. Some of our southeastern counties may even get close to 80 out there, hence why our area down here will be a little more favorable for stronger storms. Gusty south winds pushing 30 miles an hour. They'll shift out of the north behind the front and temperatures will begin to fall behind that front as well. We're going to talk about just how chilly it's going to get behind this front and about some additional thunderstorm chances in your full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right. Thanks, Chris. Well, just before six yesterday evening, a head on crash occurred near Tipton Fort on Gateway Drive that involved three Neosho residents. Missouri State Highway Patrol is a 22 year old Joshua Niswanger and 23 year old Lakin House both suffered serious injuries. They were struck as a white Nissan crossed the center line driven by 50 year old Ernie Gozin. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Gateway Drive was closed nearly two hours as the patrol's major crash investigation unit marked the vehicles before they were removed. The KBI has arrested a, a lieutenant with the Columbus Police Department for child sex crimes. KBI agents arrested 55 year old David Justice of Baxter Springs near his home around 7:15 yesterday morning. Justice faces charges of aggravated indecent liberties with a child, indecent solicitation of a child and promoting obscenity to a minor. The Columbus Police Department asked the Bureau to investigate allegations against Justice in February of last year. At that same time, the department placed him on unpaid administrative leave from his position as a lieutenant. The Missouri Department of Natural Resources is investigating the source of contaminated groundwater in Carthage. The contaminant is a chemical called tetrachloroethylene or PCE and was detected in three of 12 wells that supply raw water to the Carthage water and electric plant. In 2020, CWEP removed two wells most impacted my PCE from a service and deactivated them. The source of the contamination is currently unknown. A sample in the summer of 2024, we are going to be sampling for tree cores. So we will use um, off gassing from tree core analysis to attempt to identify if the plume is shallow or in the deep aquifer. CWEP treats all combined raw water before it's distributed to the public. PCE has not been detected in liquid waste or sewage water after treatment. Pittsburgh Community Schools is helping the state of Kansas ensure bus safety. The district is participating in the Kansas One Day Stop Arm Violation Count Survey for the Department of Education. The survey is being conducted to help determine the prevalence of drivers illegally passing school buses. When a bus comes uh, slowing down, they will add and engage their amber lights. Uh, and then the bus will come to a complete stop where they then will activate the red lights and a stop arm or stop sign will literally come off of the bus with flashing beacons. Um, that is where the stop arm uh, comes from and that's where the survey uh, is generated. The state of Kansas reported 676 violations in 2023. That number is down a 23.3% from 2022's 882 violations. Freeman Health System yesterday cut checks for eight area nursing schools. Each school received a $2,000 donation totaling $16,000. The schools receiving the, no the donations are Crowder, Missouri Southern, NEO, Pitt State, Lebec Community College, 
Carthage Technical School, Franklin Technology Center and Fort Scott Community College. Officials say the donations will help support the training of tomorrow's nurses. That's why we volunteer. That's why we have a gift shop. That's why we do the things that we do is to be able to give these funds. The nursing program, they're giving uh, the money with no strings attached. The money is raised by the Freeman Auxiliary through gift galleries, raffles and other events. A group of Kansas County Commissioners came to Pittsburgh yesterday to discuss the strategies for growing their counties and helping its residents. The Kansas County Commissioners Association hosted its spring conference at Kansas Crossing Casino. It was a chance for them to learn about budgeting tips, accessing grants and the appraisal of property values, among other topics. It can be very lonely being a county commissioner. Um, you know, we all stay in our little county and every county is different. And so getting together with other counties that are the same size as yours, of, you know, how are you spending your money? How are you, uh, you know, benefiting those that are in your county? Just different ideas. It's really great to just bounce that off other people that actually know what you're going through. The conference yesterday included a media panel. Our very own Tanya Bach was on that panel. The three day conference continues later today. And those are our top stories this half hour. Coming up next, Captain William Davis joins us to help us honor our emergency dispatchers. And later, two New York troopers received the honor from a couple of, for helping deliver their baby. You're watching the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. Where style meets comfort. Step into a world of, and give your home the makeover it deserves. Well, it's a National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week, and Captain William Davis of the Joplin Police Department is with us to share the importance of a public safety telecommunicator. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us I this morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Now, you know, 911 dispatchers, telecommunicators, they are often unsung heroes uh, when in times of need and crisis. Can you talk to me a little bit more about their vital role that they play? Yeah, so I mean, they're they're the lifeline for us. I mean, they're the ones that uh, whenever you call in, you're having an emergency, uh, they're the ones that uh, are are that calm voice. Yes, um, they're they're giving direction. They're providing medical assistance. Um, you know, helping you through your crisis. They're that that first point of contact whenever people call 911 or, or call for help. And so, uh, you know, the second week of April is is set aside each year to to recognize them and kind of honor them for the work that they do. And, Absolutely, yes. Um, because we we couldn't do our jobs without them. And and so we're we're very appreciative for for all the work that they do. And uh, we're just again want to want to thank them for for everything that they do to 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 help the community, to help uh, officers, to help EMS, fire department. Uh, they just play a vital role in the public safety function uh, of government. So, absolutely. And then speaking about something regarding public safety for this weekend, you know, April 20th, or more commonly known as 420, yep. um, it's an infamous day. You know, it's to celebrate, you know, marijuana usage, and now it's illegal in this in the state of Missouri. But, you know, impaired driving is still illegal. So can That's you right. talk to me a little <clears throat> bit about the uh, department's efforts? Yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, even though that marijuana passage uh, here recently in the last couple of years was uh, made legal, uh, there are still restrictions on, on how you can consume it. And yes. uh, operating a motor vehicle under the influence of marijuana is still illegal. Um, and so, uh, you know, we have 420 coming up, April 20th coming up. Uh, we know that there's probably going to be a big increase in consumption mm -hmm. that day. And so uh, we're just asking people to just be responsible, um, you know, make plans ahead of time, you know, for for sober rides um, or, you know, just make sure that you're not going to be driving under the influence. Um, and it, we just we just want to make sure that the roadways yeah. are safe for everybody. Absolutely. Uh, for those individuals, for other people on the roadways. Um, and so just making a plan ahead of time because we're going to have extra enforcement uh, efforts going on. We'll have extra officers out on the street that that day and through that night, uh, you know, looking for those impaired drivers, hoping to take them off the roadway and make everything safer. Absolutely, because the consequences of still doing that, I mean, they, they can impact one's life and they can be damaging to other people's lives as well. Absolutely, so, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You, you get to a crash and it's one of those where, you know, there's not only the, uh, you know, possibility of going to jail, there's, yes. uh, you know, potential damages to your vehicle, mm -hmm. but it's also uh, the impact of, of other pedestrians or other motorists out on the roadway and uh, the effect that you can have on them and their families, especially, you know, heaven forbid if it's a, you know, a fatal situation. Absolutely. An important reminder for sure. Well, thank you so much for joining us Absolutely. this morning. Stick around. We're back with more weather and news after this.
Bonus cash on a brand new 2023 Escape, only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 719 on this Thursday morning on an alert day here in the Skywatch Weather Center as we're keeping an eye for strong, potentially severe thunderstorms by late morning into the afternoon. Now take a look at the Skywatch Storm Tracker. This is where that cold front is and we've got the storms developing along it. Earlier, these didn't look too impressive, but we're starting to get some heavier shower activity as it continues to roll off to the south and east and will eventually enter an area that's going to be a little more favorable for strong to severe thunderstorm development. The stronger activity, even some severe thunderstorms earlier in the Kansas City and St. Joseph area continuing to slide off to the east right ahead of that front, and we're going to continue to watch these storms as they develop. Again, right now, not overly impressive. They're not strong, nor are they severe, but it's this activity that it enters us as it enters a slightly more favorable environment. We'll have the opportunity to give us that chance for strong, severe thunderstorms as we end the afternoon. So let's take a look at the loop. You can see where they flared up, and then they just didn't look all that impressive, but then if you watch in the last few frames here, we're seeing some additional development, a little heavier rain out there. And so we're going to continue to watch these as they push off to the southeast through the morning. Here's where our severe threat lies right now. We do have a low tornado risk, primarily in our eastern counties, and then we have a low to elevated hail risk across the area and a low to elevated wind risk. And as you can see, the elevated portions remain off to the south and east. These storms again will enter a much more favorable environment to our east uh, where they could see much more significant severe weather than what we see, but we're going to be right on the cusp of that as that front rolls in. Now, if this front was rolling in later in the day, this would be a totally different story because all of us would have an opportunity to get much warmer and get a little more instability in place. But because the front's rolling through now, the instability will increase across these zones, but it won't be overly significant. It's not expected to be overly significant at this point. So even though you're not highlighted up here in our northwestern counties, a strong storm or two may be possible, but the better chances are going to be off to the south and east. So here's the future track heading to noon. We'll have scattered showers and thunderstorms, and again, these will have the potential to be strong to severe. As the front pushes through, we're still a bit warm right on the back side of it, and so additional redevelopment of thunderstorms will be possible afternoon, and some of those, again, could be strong, potentially severe. And as that front continues to slide off to our south and east, by about 5 o'clock, the last of the activity, at least the last of the severe threat, is going to be rolling out of our area, and we're going to be much cooler back behind this with these gusty north winds ushering in temperatures back into the 40s for overnight tonight. And this is what we're talking about with that available instability. This is our camera seventh and range line. Not a cloud in the sky. We've got ample sunshine. It's warming up. Dew points come up a bit. Humidity's come up a bit. 68 south breeze at 15 gusting to 23, bringing in more of that warm, moist air ahead of the front. And so that's why that severe threat is a little further south and east, because we are going to have that opportunity to warm up a bit more than those of us out to the northwest will. This is a look at the temperature. So there's that front. And this is what we're talking about. Yates Center, Neotache, Chanute, Iola, Sedan. You're very likely hitting your highs right now in the low 70s, and then that front will push through out ahead of it. We're in the 60s. We have not hit our highs yet, and we're going to have just enough time to warm up as we go through the morning hours that some of us will be mid 70s and further south and east could even make uh, close to 80 degrees out there. So again, through the morning, those thunderstorms will begin to push through on that cold front. We're going to be hovering in the 70s ahead of that front. And again, ahead of the front, mid 70s on average for highs, thunderstorms breezy out there and there'll still be gusty on the backside when the front shifts through. We'll have gusty north winds across the area. And then again, those of you in the northwestern counties that we mentioned earlier, you're very likely going to go into the 50s by this afternoon. We're going to be below average as we head into the weekend showers tomorrow night lasting into the weekend. Not a bad Monday, and then we're watching additional thunderstorm chances as we head into next week. But again, we'll keep an eye on those thunderstorms through the morning hours for you. That's check of your forecast. We're back with more right after this. Dear Triathlon. Because you're not everyone. And that's a good thing. Bad boy. Mo with an attitude. Well, two New York State Troopers are now considered honorary uncles after they helped deliver a newborn baby. They stepped in to help when they got the call that a woman was in labor in the parking lot of a nearby Lowe's store. Natalie Castletoni has the story. 
New York State Troopers Joseph Vinci and Alex Mullen visiting baby Dahlia at F.F. Thompson Hospital the day after they helped deliver her in a car at a Lowe's parking lot in Waterloo. Ashley Finnamore says she was in denial that she was in active labor until it was too late. We left our house and made it about 20 minutes before I said, I'm not going to make it to the hospital. The troopers were just a mile away when the call came in, but the ambulance crew was a bit further behind. At that point in time, we realized it was going to come down to us. Uh, the ambulance was en route, but we knew we were going to be the guys. So we did the best we could, and baby Dahlia is here today looking beautiful as ever. Dahlia's father, Dave, says he was amazed at how quickly the troopers arrived and is glad both of his girls made it through. Those guys being there was an absolute necessity, and, and uh, I'm so grateful. And uh, we definitely consider them uncles for, for her, for sure. Thankfully, Trooper Vinci's a great catch. This was a first for both troopers, who say they are glad they could be a part of such a special moment. There's a saying that we wear many hats in law enforcement, and we certainly do. This is not a hat that I thought I was going to be wearing yesterday, but it fit well, I guess I'd say, for me and Trooper Mullen. We, we did what we had to do. Troopers turned honorary uncles. I know Mom and Dad have already talked about inviting us to the first birthday party, which we'll definitely be at, and kind of watching her grow up through this world. Something I'll never forget the rest of my life, for sure. What an impressive story. And I mean, yeah, there's all sorts sweet. of stories like that, but I, I love that they're still taking part and that they're honorary I uncles. know, that's incredible. <laughs> that's, that child's going to be safe for the rest of his life. Absolutely. Well, coming up, a few area knife throwers are getting ready to take on the rest of the world in the World Axe and a Knife Throwing Championships. And we have an alert day today for strong, potentially severe thunderstorms across the area. Well, have another look at your forecast when we come back. Person I can be. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, welcome back to the KOM Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 7:31. I'm Elise Snowy. Thrive Allen County cut the ribbon on a new naloxone vending box installed outside their Iola, Kansas office yesterday. Naloxone or Narcan is a drug that can swiftly reverse opioid overdoses. This is one of many naloxone boxes popping up around the state, but the first in Allen County. SEK Recovery Resources and Thrive Allen County hopes to break down barriers for immediate first response to an opioid, opioid overdose and save lives by placing the items in a free and easy newspaper style machine. Voters in Carterville, Missouri will head to the polls again at the end of the month for a special election. This election was called after the race for a council person in Ward 1 ended in a tie at 14 votes apiece for candidates Devin Keelan and Darlene Taylor. The revote is scheduled for April 30th and will cost the city $1,261. In Barton County, a race for the board of the village of Milford also ended in a tie. The county clerk's office says paperwork has been sent to resolve the tie, but they have not yet heard back. We invite you to join us today for our Hero Fund USA Telethon. During our noon, 5 and 6 p.m. newscast, we'll have volunteers standing by to take your calls and donations. All the money raised will support Hero Fund USA, which partners with local first responders to provide them with equipment and safety resources. Well, it, it tremendously helps us keep our firefighters in the, the right kind of gear to, to use on fires, uh, protects them extremely well, and uh, we use it for everything, uh, such as car accidents and, and uh, typical things like that. You can also donate through our website, koemnewsnow.com. Joplin shoppers have had a busy week. Tuesday, they flocked to Menards, and yesterday, they lined up down the street for the opening of Ollie's. The store, whose slogan is Good Stuff Cheap, features closeout merchandise at a reduced price. Around 300 people gathered at 9 a.m. to be among the first in the doors. Yeah, this was a very successful opening. Good turnout from the population here in the Joplin area. We had several hundred come in right at 9 a.m. Uh, and it's been a steady flow since we've opened the doors this morning. The store is located at 1329 South Range Line. 
Well, three four staters will head to Tulsa later today for the World Axe and Knife Throwing Championships. The four state event features contestants from around the globe competing for a $60,000 prize. Ben Fowler, Brody Persley and Kinzen Michael are local throwers ready to put the rest of the world on the chopping block. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to uh, compete under the lights on ESPN2. I uh, made the U.S. Open quarterfinals, so I have had moments of uh, high pressure in this sort of uh, environment. So channel that energy that I experienced, learn from that, and, um, you know, do my best. The Main Street Axe Company will be live streaming the event from their Facebook and Instagram pages. And we've got ourselves an alert day today for the potential of strong to severe thunderstorms. Nothing impressive out there just yet, but we're monitoring the cold front and we're monitoring the thunderstorms that are trying to develop along that front. Right now, the instability across the northwestern portion of our viewing area is not all that great. But as you head further south and east, we do have a bit more instability and we're expecting to have just a little more roll in through the morning hours that should allow these storms to intensify as they continue to push off. Off to the southeast and we're getting our first lightning strike showing up on the Skywatch storm tracker, which is just an indication that we're starting to see that thunderstorm development actually take place. And this cold front will continue to push to the south and east. We will see additional showers and storms along that front and it'll move off and start to bring us that opportunity for the stronger storms, say between about 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. across the area. So here's a look at where the severe threat stands right now. We have that low end tornado risk for uh, most of our eastern counties and then we have a low to slightly elevated hail risk and a low to elevated wind risk. And this is what we're talking about. Even though storms are developing here, it's out here where we're going to get a little warmer and a little more instability. And then further east, we actually have a higher severe threat out towards Springfield points east uh, where these storms are expected to really intensify because of course they're still well ahead of that front. They'll get a lot more instability in place out there. Right now in Joplin, 68 sunny skies, 67 in Pittsburgh right now. And again, we're going to warm ahead of that front. There's that front. So as we've mentioned through the morning, Iola Chanute, Neota Shea, Yates Center, Sedan, you all are hitting your highs right now in the low 70s. As we head into the afternoon, you'll fall back into the 50s. Out ahead of the front where we're still in the 60s, we're going to still warm mid 70s, maybe even some near 80 degree readings a little further southeast. And that's what's going to allow that instability to kind of build ahead of the front. So scattered showers and thunderstorms again continuing. They'll be out of here by about five o'clock, but we'll keep an eye on them behind the front. The gusty south winds will shift out of the north and our temperatures will begin to fall. We'll talk about just how cold it's going to get behind this front and how the weekend looks in the full forecast here in a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOM Morning News. The war between Israel and Hamas impacting a far beyond people. We'll see how one group's mission is to rescue dogs from the region. Ashley Spring semi-annual mattress sale is going on now just for just $30 a month. Plus, get a free box spring with any mattress purchase for better sleep and savings. Shop Ashley today. And Consumer Watch this morning. The Supreme Court rules on a job discrimination in forced job transfers. The nation's highest court unanimously agreed that workers can successfully claim civil rights violations and some forced job transfers if they can prove some harm was caused by the move. The claims can be successful even when workers aren't docked pay or demoted. The ruling also revives a St. Louis police case involving a forced transfer of a female sergeant when division leadership changed. A weight loss related drug may reduce the severity of sleep apnea in obese adults. Findings from a phase three clinical trial for Eli Lilly's Zep bound shows that usage of the drug, specifically the active ingredient terzeptide, reduces severity by almost two thirds in people that have obstructive sleep apnea and obesity. The condition affects 80 million adult Americans and can lead to stroke, heart failure and type two diabetes. Inflation is eating into their profits and some of them may not survive. Fox News and media reporter Oliviana Calmez is on a farm in Missouri. Oliviana, what? Oh, excuse me. 
Inflation is raising the price for feed, fertilizer, even farmland. Some of these owners saying they may not be able to keep these farms in their families. I might be the generation that loses it, not just, not just my fault, but just the world around me might change that much that I can't hold on to it no more. Andrew is a sixth generation farmer. He and his dad say rising costs make farming a lot pricier than it used to be. My dad retired about 20 years ago and he just can't believe what things cost anymore compared to when he was farming. And that means a lot less profit. Uh, the input costs are, are ridiculous when compared to then. Uh, fuel costs are higher, uh, machinery costs, and when the price of grain goes up, so does everything else. U.S. farm real estate value averaged $4,080 per acre in 2023, up $280 an acre. The president of the Missouri Farm Bureau says this makes it hard for farms to expand. There is a tremendous competition for, for access to those acres. He says it squeezes out small family farms. Just last year, Missouri lost 300. We've seen a 7% drop in or decline in the number of family farms in the United States. Because of that, he says it's no wonder it's harder to keep farms in the family and even harder to start fresh. In Missouri, we've passed a new state law to try to provide incentives for beginning people wanting to find acres to uh, be able to hopefully match up with those who want to retire or exit. They hope to preserve the community they love, even if it takes some extra work. It's something that I grew up with and my dad's grown up with and hopefully my children will grow up with. And of course, the inflation on gas and groceries that's hitting us is hitting these farmers as well, just adding into the mix. In St. Charles, Missouri, Oliviana Calmes, Fox News. That's it for Consumer Watch. We'll be right back. Kansas Crossing Casino, welcome. Community dealership. Wood Motor, a solid name you can trust. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 744 on this Thursday morning. It is an alert day here in the four states as we are watching the potential for strong to severe thunderstorms as we go into the late morning and early afternoon hours. So here's that cold front. We're getting some thunderstorm activity beginning to develop out there along this cold front. We had a couple of flashes of lightning or a couple of lightning strikes rather picked up by uh, the Skywatch storm tracker. These storms try to, to get a little more organized, but right now they're not in an environment that is overly favorable for them to organize, but as they push off to the south and east, they will enter a much more favorable environment. Okay, so that white lightning strike is one that's newer and the dark gray is one that's a little older. So we've got showers and storms just to the north and to the southeast of uh, Eureka, one to the southeast of Burlington, some showers entering Yates Center, Coyville, uh, Twin Grove and getting ready to roll into Howard, Fredonia, you're up next. So that's why we've been talking as well communities out here in our northwestern counties you're hitting your highs right now it's going to start to get cooler behind this front and you're looking at afternoon temperatures into the 50s across uh, northwestern parts of our viewing area so here comes that cold front here come those thunderstorm chances here's what we're looking at in terms of that severe threat right now we have a low tornado risk mainly in our eastern counties a low to slightly elevated hail risk and a low to elevated wind risk. And you'll note that even though storms are forming here, as we mentioned, they're not really in an environment that's favorable for them to really intensify as they push off to the southeast where we're going to get a little more warming, a little more moisture in place. This is where they're going to have that opportunity to become strong, potentially severe. And we're looking at that time frame probably between about 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. today. So on the future track, we go to about noon. We're going to have that cold front Front, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some of these again could be strong, possibly severe out there. And then even as the front pushes through, we could see some redevelopment behind the front, and that could still be some strong, potentially severe thunderstorms as we head into the early afternoon hours or mid afternoon hours out there. And by about five, the last of this activity is starting to roll out of the area. So maybe a few showers still lingering Stockton, Monette, Cassville, Bentonville, but these will be pushing out. And the greater severe threat is actually off to our east where they could see much more significant severe weather because they're far enough ahead of that front that they'll get much more instability in place ahead of it than what we'll be able to muster across the area today. Behind this front, winds out of the north and take a look at our uh, temperatures tonight back into the 40s. So this is what we're talking about right now. Clouds off to the west of Joplin. Joplin itself, though, sunny. Dew points up there to 62. Humidity is 81%, so fairly muggy start. 68, and that south breeze 
at 15, gusting upwards of 23 miles an hour. So that's allowing a little more warmer, a little more unstable air to build in out ahead of this front before it starts to roll in. Again, back here though, yeah, you're in the low 70s, you're warm. Unfortunately, just not enough instability able to build during the dark hours out there. And so that's why these storms aren't as intense yet as they could be as they slide off to the south and east. So again, behind the front, you're already at your highs. You'll be in the 50s this afternoon ahead of the front, hovering in the 70s, scattered showers and storms, south winds gusting upwards of 30 miles an hour, and then they'll shift out of the north, still gusting out there 30, 35 miles an hour, um, but they'll be out of the north behind the front and temperatures will begin to fall behind that. So on average ahead of the front, we're looking at highs to make about the mid 70s. Some of our southeastern counties, uh, Monette, Mount Vernon, Bentonville, for example, could reach near 80. So again, that's why the, that higher severe threat is a little further to the south and to the east. Behind the front, though, again, gusty north winds, mostly cloudy and chilly out there tonight. 45 for our low, so into the 40s out there. Below average temperatures uh, through the weekend. Showers return tomorrow evening and continue through Sunday. We'll warm up next week with another round of potential showers and thunderstorms next Tuesday through Friday. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more right after this. and they married is not who they thought on the next Tamron Hall. Tamron Hall, this morning at 10, right here on Fox 14. A group of dogs rescued from war-torn areas in the Israel-Hamas war are now finding forever homes right here in the U.S. Luke Glasser reports on some lucky dogs and new owners in Michigan. They just truly want to be loved. The gentle eyes of pups like Cody have seen a lot. Some of these dogs had their ears cut off and they were full of maggots and they were abused and they were neglected and starved. Kelly Labonte, director of Detroit Animal Welfare Group, tells us they received 10 dogs from animal protection organization SPCA International that came from the Middle East. She says each of the dogs received has been living through the Israel-Hamas war. They're very, very resilient. Uh, they're the Canaan breed that is from that area, from Jordan and Palestine area. Intelligent. They are protective but not aggressive. They are great family dogs. A few have already been adopted, and CBS News Detroit was lucky enough to capture the moment one family made the decision to change not only their lives, but one of these dogs as well. <laughs> I can't wait to take her home. Zena, full of energy and affection, found her forever home. I'll send you yeah. pictures all the time. With her new mom, Stephanie Gruno. She needs a good home. She needs a good, loving, safe home, and she wasn't safe there. Gruno lost her 13-year-old family dog, Peanut, a month ago. She says she wasn't planning on another dog so soon, but says when she saw Zena, she saw Peanut. It was a wrap after that. We have a lot of love to give each other for a lot of years. For more information about the dogs, head to doghouse.com. That's D-A-W-G-H-O-U-S. Yes. A little different spelling yes. on there, so you have an opportunity to help some of these these pups out there. Absolutely. Well, as you've been seeing down here, we have an alert day today for strong to severe thunderstorms as we head into the late morning and afternoon. So here's a look. You can see thunderstorm activity along that front starting to look a little more organized out there. Again, nothing strong or severe at this point, but all of this will continue to slide off to the southeast in an area where we're slightly more favorable for strong to severe thunderstorm development. And the new outlook just came out. We still have that low end tornado risk across some of our eastern counties counties, but they've also increased or added a significant hail probability for some of our southeastern counties and expanded that as well. And we have that low to elevated wind risk out there because again, as the storms slide off to the southeast, they're going to run into some slightly more unstable air and they'll really intensify once they push off to our east. We'll have one more look at your forecast plus the news you need to know right after this. Are you tired of feeling cramped in your current RV? Proud to salute Frank Skaggs, a four state hero. Here's a check of today's top headlines, the news you need to know before you head out the door. Joplin police say several thefts from vehicles happened throughout the city over the past few days. Police advise you to lock your car door and to not leave valuable items in the car and to call 911 if it happens to you. 
We invite you to join us today for our Hero Fund USA Telethon. During our noon 5 and 6 p.m. newscast, we'll have volunteers standing by to take your calls and donations. All the money raised will support Hero Fund USA, which partners with local first responders to provide them with equipment and safety resources. You can also donate through our website, koamnewsnow.com. And we've got ourselves an alert day today where we could see some strong, potentially severe thunderstorms starting around 10 a.m. and continuing until about 4 p.m. Ahead of the front, highs mid-70s, maybe even some of us, especially say Mount Vernon, Monette, Cassville, could potentially reach close to 80. And that's what's going to help build some instability ahead of the front. Our friends in our northwestern counties, as we've been talking about, Iola, Chanute, Fredonia, Yates Center, you're hitting your highs now in the low 70s, and that front's going to push through, and you'll spend most of the day in the 50s. Ahead of the front, winds gusting out of the south, upwards of 30 miles an hour. Behind the front, they're out of the north, still gusting upwards of 30 miles an hour. And temperatures will begin to fall. Our great, greatest severe risk or our greatest chances for severe weather will be between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. across the area. Once we get past 5, the storms move out. We're mostly cloudy, still breezy, much cooler tonight than where we have been uh, across the area for the last several nights, down into the mid-40s out there. As we look ahead, this front does uh, bring a punch when it comes to temperatures below average temperatures through the weekend additional showers Friday evening and those will continue into the weekend Then we'll start to warm up next week but we're also watching another round of some thunderstorms as we head into next Tuesday through Friday so again we're gonna keep an eye on the uh, thunderstorm chances uh, as we go through the morning yes. and uh, keep you updated if anything does develop yeah, absolutely well, the classic vehicle is getting a special edition to celebrate 60 years of production Ford is releasing a 60th anniversary package of its Mustang model later this year, but only in a very limited fashion. The GT Premium model will be available as a convertible or coupe and will feature special design touches, including a throwback throw grille. Only 1965 will be made in tribute to its first model year, so car collectors keep an eye yeah, out. Absolutely, yes. Well, thank you so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We're back with more at noon. Have a great rest of your day.